This is Gabriel Blythe, survivor of the end of the world, right here in Salt Lake City, kind of like River City, but we are about weeks into the end of the world. I haven't kept track so much. I lost track of where we were at in my farmer's almanac. I'm a mess. It's just got so hectic here, you know? I don't even know where to begin with all this nonsense. First, you tell me the world ends as we know it. And we see the rise of the others, which a lot more of them lately. Like, a lot more. Then you give me a long, fun bit of prolonged isolation, which will probably result in years, decades even, of therapy. Then you give me the most aloof person on this planet that she won't even give me her name. Then I have to wear her down just to talk to me. Go back to where we think it all started to only find out this artifact may not be there or may be destroyed. Deal with the depressing walk back to our reality. Then walk in two knights of the round table in their tabard uniforms and giant frickin' swords. And now I have drama with one of them. I think drama was the last thing I expected to deal with for a very long time. You see, in the films, that every person who survived the end of the world is always so... gritty? Emotional grittiness. Yeah. No one is opening up about their feelings. No, no. All the drama in the show is... Did you get bit? Rashki, you can't do this to me. Did you get bit? Why they never flew me out to Hollywood, we'll never know. So not long after last week's session, I reached out to Lancelot. Told him I wanted to talk about my feelings. I'm out of practice on this, okay? I had to suffer, but I sure as hell wasn't going to suffer alone. He's chill. He said he would love to have that conversation. What do you mean, love? You love having difficult conversations? Sure, I guess. All right. So we set a time, a time, and we take a walk around the park, just up that way on 7th. And I lay it out to him. Why I'm so mad. What my beliefs were as far as the others and their mentality. And seeing him so laissez-faire about killing these others have triggered my feelings about killing to a degree that I am still processing. Maybe it's a it's a kind of envy. Like, I wish it came as naturally to me. Who knows? It's more likely that it's just me being mad about the murdering of people. I know. Strange to have that belief. And then, this man took every word in stride. He would remind me where I left off when I got distracted or ran off on a tangent, which none of you do, so <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> or he would nod or repeat something back. And then thanked me for sharing my feelings. See, this drama... 
I didn't want any of this. He then told me about how one of his objectives was to ensure my life. During his trip, he wanted to make sure I would live, and he was willing to do just about anything to do that. He's not fond of violence, but felt it was necessary since the Crown ordered him as such. And with the increase in others, he... He sees it as keeping true to his duty. Which sounds a lot like Harris to me. I'm still not crazy about it, but I guess it makes sense. He said something about if the crown demands, the crown knows best, or some nonsense like that. Which is kind of brainwashy. I know you're not supposed to bite the hand that feeds and all that, but... That doesn't mean you shouldn't check if the food is still poisonous. He asked if he could be forgiven and wants to rebuild the trust. Which I said, eventually. I want to trust that he can get me to safety if we get a Brett and Eileen situation. But he's going to have to answer a lot of questions. And he agreed. So, maybe we'll hear some juicy government secrets. Area 51 levels of secrets. Could be pretty cool. So, make sure to send in your questions now. Soundboard noise. Am I being too easy on him? Is it bad that I never wanted to be angry with him in the first place? There's just so few of us, with possibly less and less of us every single day. Being angry with someone just sounds like the fastest way to be alone again. I mean, I'm still not mad at Brett or Eileen. They're dead, so... One, it doesn't matter so much to me. And two... They were scared. And just like animals, when scared, they lash out. I get it. What would you do? Yeah, that sounds like good advice. Take it one step at a time. You're right. No reason to stress about it. King and country, you are good at this. <laughs> Thanks, Survivor. Uh, uh, what's that? That's not what you told me? Uh, I, I, I can barely hear you. It's kind of like you're breaking up. Guess, uh, I, I guess you're just going to have to come down to the college building and tell me to my face. <laughs> Classic Gabe. <laughs> I hope you're doing well, Survivor. I hope you are, at the very least, enjoying my drama. Or maybe you want to come and be a part of it. I don't know. What I do know is you aren't alone. And you don't have to be. <laughs> <laughs> 